um, a former Yeezy designer has actually put together their own clothes or their own footwear collection. Similar, I think we've seen a few of these, right? We've seen the, um, the ex Balenciaga designer also launch their own trainer select collection. I think you're going to see Pimby, maybe someone from Fear of God do the same thing, maybe a former Elix designer. I'm not sure what happens. I'm not sure. <clears throat> I would assume, sorry, that if you were working for a brand like um, Yeezy or Balenciaga or even maybe Elix or something or Fear of God, I would assume the, the co founders or the founders of those brands would want to keep hold of their best talent. I would assume that there's not that I don't know. I get the feeling because of the people that have kept their jobs in the street of industry, especially some of the people that I know or some people that I've been familiar with over the years, some of them are still, some of them still have jobs, you know, mostly because, you know, they never quit because it's a, essentially a perfect job. You can suspend reality for a long period of time. You essentially are able to buy clothes and trainers and, you know, get loads of free stuff, get flown around the world and secure deals of different kind of brands. So there's no need to really kind of move anywhere else. Um, so, so essentially it kind of makes it difficult for new fresh talent to come in. But I'm also of the thinking that there probably isn't many. There probably isn't as many people as I think there are out there who are able to do those jobs. So, who is the next Tinker Hatfield? Do they exist? Um, are kids actually going out there and you know deciding to go and study industrial design, product design, textile, um, you know whatever maybe manufacturing, business, fashion business. I don't know something else kind of. Are they really doing that, or are they going for the easy subjects like stylist, photographer, fashion editor, and stuff? I don't think people are actually going for those jobs that would um, eventually lead to you getting those really coveted and prized jobs because it feels like the same group of i don't know 10 to 20 designers are seemed are rotating around the same kind of brands remember that big case nike ended up settling with adidas with those three designers they poached from them like jeremy like they went they made a real big effort and they really kind of you know cut off their nose to spite their face paid a lot of compensation to adidas in order to kind of secure those designers signature and make sure they came over to the swoosh so it might be that there's not many people out there if that's the case why would a brand let someone go or allow them to go and make their own brand or maybe my assumption is wrong and maybe there's not that much money within the footwear industry or working behind the scenes um so people are having to kind of start up their own brands which i don't think is easy right i wouldn't assume making your own footwear brand is something that's really easy to do that's why a lot of brands decide to kind of hook up with manufacturers or with other people in the industry who are professionals at that i think even half right recently they stopped they ceased their footwear division of their company because i think it was hemorrhaging too much money it's probably costing them too much right keep up and i'm pretty sure said in the interview they stopped it because of that and concentrate more efforts on the actual apparel and then if they want to do collaborations they can with people like converse vans and just kind of keep that ball ball that ball rolling but to actually make your own shoes is a crazy thing to do especially you even look at supreme supreme don't even do that do they they collaborate with everybody when it comes to footwear they never make their own footwear from the bottom from you know from the ground up the last bit of footwear they might have done what might have been those Puerto Rico Air Force Ones from back in the day. Everything has been collaborations, whether it's Padmore and Barnes, um, Clarks, Nike, of course. Like, there's not nothing else. Isn't it? They don't ever make their own shoes. So anyway, this person, the former user designer, is launching their own affordable tabby sneaker, and I, it looks pretty interesting. I'm quite, I'm a big fan of it. Obviously, you guys know that the tabby is uh, a shoe that's synonymous with Maison Martin Margiela. It's an iconic shoe that has. I think in the last few months or maybe the last few years has really kind of come back into into style, into trend, into people's consciousness, into people's wardrobes. I've seen people wearing them all over the place now. Maybe it's the addition of the tabby boot with the heel has really sparked people's interest. You've seen people like Lucas Sabat kind of wear it all around the place and stuff. And I've kind of been a fan of it from the time I saw it listed on Sense on essence sorry so one of my favorite models out there again maybe not so it doesn't probably lend itself well to my body shape and my foot shape because my foot is fat and wide but i like the overall sleek nature of it and also like that this designer or this version of the tabby boot has a bit more of a chunkier sole to it i know it's, uh, the original tabby boot um especially the uh, now the, the men's one was especially a slipper now they've added the kind of heel to kind of um uh to be a bit more similar to what the women have they've always had a bit of a chunky heel on the back and now the men's or it's kind of a unisex version has a heel on it too i'm not sure if it's unisex. maybe the women's one's a bit slimmer but regardless i like this the sole on this shoe it reminds me a little bit of the sole from the is it the easy 900 the one with the strap on the front that's the kind of sole it reminds me of a little bit i like the fact that it's translucent so you've got like a black neoprene sort of like striped sock on the upper with obviously the split toe on the front 
I like the fact that you've got all these kind of lines on it. It kind of reminds me of uh, to, is it topography. You know, when you look at the Earth from really far from like a satellite or something and you kind of got all the lines. It kind of reminds me of that bit of topography on the top of that. Maybe it's, it's based on that. I'm not too sure. You've got three colorways here. You've got like a black colorway. You've got a gray colorway and then you've got white, I'm assuming. Is that the same colorway here, the white one? Yeah. Um, it looks really, really nice with a nice translucent clear sole on the bottom. Um, so nice product shots of the shoe here actually in place. And I think they'll, they, they'll end up probably doing quite well because I have seen quite a lot of people, especially around Stratford, especially some of the foreign exchange students wearing the Balenciaga sock races. They've been all over the place. They're really, really popular shoe. They're probably, I would say, maybe because of comfort, maybe because of versatility. They they seem like, it from again, from the outside looking in, it seems like the Balenciaga sock runner or sock racer, whatever it's called, is a lot more popular than the Balenciaga triple S. Just in terms of the general public, I'm not sure it's because I'm not sure it's because um, general public are wearing fakes of the Blenzerga sock trainer, but I still think fakes are a good indication of just how popular something uh, something is. You know, you only have to look at you know the fakes Yeezy people wear around the world, right? Um, obviously, shows how popular the shoe is. Some people just can't help get hold of them. Some people are, don't want to pay the retail value, so they much rather pay you know a uh, ninety euros or fifty euros for a pair from Hong Kong. But I've seen a lot of people, a lot more people wearing the sock racer Blenzerga shoe than I have seen people wear the triple S. And again, maybe it might be just aesthetically the triple S is a lot difficult, a lot more difficult to wear. It looks, just looks completely ridiculous. It's not the most comfortable shoe in the world. I have a pair, you know, there's zero flex in that shoe. Um, it's not the kind of shoe you'd wear to go running or, you know, or anything that, of, of that of that ilk. So maybe that might be the case of it. But I actually like this sock racer. Looks really cool. Um, nice upper, sleek silhouette, nice sole good colors and again it'll probably do really well and obviously some socks as well that go with it the text here at the bottom says the following quickly read this joining the yeezy alumni already dabbing a sneaker design former junior yeezy designer uh sarah jaramillo co-created a footwear model to kick off a new venture dubbed um illison self-described as a non-conventional platform to launch merch and projects which i'm i'm a big fan of actually the way she decided or she i'm assuming decided to do this um, I just like the idea that you would launch a brand, not the conventional way with like clothes, but with like other bits and pieces, whether it be a handbag, whether it be a backpack, some shoes, some hats, some miscellaneous items. I think that's a quite a cool way. Like I would assume if you were a new brand, if you were a streetwear brand, um, you know, what Supreme do in terms of their miscellaneous items is really, you know, they can't be touched, you know, from making pinball machines to scramblers to baseball bats and stuff. But I do think there is room for a brand to come in and do something similar, launch a brand firstly we just it's like i've always kind of had the in my, the dream of launching my own skateboard brand but launching it first with firstly with maybe skateboard hardware maybe similar to what diamond supply did before when they launched like right, t-shirts and skateboard decks and trucks and stuff and then kind of uh, fleshing out all the other bits and pieces so not launching a full collection kind of launching maybe some wheels some socks some hats a bag or i don't know whatever maybe some rings and then kind of from there gauging the demand and then trying to fill out and then from the people that buy your clothing maybe then try and create an avatar of who your customer is and kind of trying to you know fill in their wardrobe with the pieces that you think they might need or, or they want, might want that might be a good way to go about it but i don't know i like i like what this person is doing let's continue so describe as a non-conventional platform to launch merch and, and uh, projects the illisim's aim is to um, that's how it's pronounced right I L Y S M is to present a debut offering that succinctly succinctly encapsulates its worldview. It's accomplished by its premier footwear model designed by Jared Milo, who is also experienced as a pro Provenza Schuler's accessory designer, and Alice Wang, a sustainable tabby inspired shoe offered in an affordable po price point. Though the tabby silhouette isn't inherently distinct to the footwear industry, um Island's offering stands out due to its contemporary thoughtful construction crafted from yarn sourced from mill that specializes in natural traceable products the shoes are designed from the ground up with a consciousness in mind offered in white black and colorways their uppers are specifically designed to have eight percent waste material over the sneakers models thanks to a platform pattern sorry that knits the upper exactly to shape each shoe silhouette textiles each blends threads of recycled polyester viscose silk or comfort and durability with merino wool sock liner that inherently reduces smell from sweat and footprint supported by a layer of molding free merino wool and recycled foam to complete their motif the innocent offers a pair of white socks made of pair made to pair perfectly with the shoe complete with a separate toe the tabby sneaker retails for 99 dollars wow it's a really cool price point man 
recommend you check them out. Also, I didn't know it's black and white. I thought it was three colorways, black, gray, and white. So I'm assuming that kind of gray colorway here is just when you kind of like, you know, tilt them left to right, maybe. That's quite cool. Is that the case? It can't be, surely. I'm surely there's are three different colorways, right? That, that, and that. Those are three different colorways right there. I'm sure they are. But anyway, really cool price point, $99. Available now, I'm assuming, that they're on their online store. They've got a cool little Instagram post here showing how they put it together, I'm assuming. So yeah, definitely check it out. Um, you former user designer is launching their own sustainable tabby sneaker. It looks really interesting. Again, I'm interested to see what the movements are in the football industry in general when it comes to these kind of shoes. It seems like Yeezy has another tabby kind of karate shoe coming out. Um, obviously, Balenciaga is doing their kind of version of a really slim plim sole. Maybe it's a reaction to all the massive dad shoes, right? Everyone with like the really thick soles. Maybe that's the reaction. We're gonna, that's the kind of natural reaction to kind of go back to a slimmer silhouette. And it might um, favor the fashion types who are bored of the streetwear influences. And it might go back to the whole aspect of tailoring. You never know. But let's check it out. Let's Let's keep an eye on it. See what's happening with the scene. And maybe, just maybe, this might um, be the birth of a whole new um, trend within sneakers nowadays, especially within fashion. Maybe a more sleeker silhouette, not so loud.